Good morning to this week's View on Africa. My name is Julia Bello Schunemann. I'm a senior research consultant with the African Futures and Innovation Program at the Institute for Security Studies. I'm currently based in Lagos, Nigeria, but I'm talking with you from the ISS offices in Pretoria, South Africa. Today, I will discuss structural risk factors and political instability in Sub-Saharan Africa and how modeling and forecasting can be used as tools to support conflict prevention in Sub-Saharan Africa. I will conclude this briefing with some of our key findings, but let me summarize a few of them here. The ISS analysis yields both optimism and uncertainty. Generally, Sub-Saharan Africa's tendency towards political instability has declined. The region's overall age structure does not promote political stability. Nevertheless, demographic risk is reducing steadily and will significantly decrease to 2040. Risk stemming from low levels of development has also eased over time and is projected to reduce further, reflecting an overall improvement in Sub-Saharan Africa's socio-economic performance. At the same time, inequalities and discrimination between, group, between groups is likely to continue to fuel conflict. Lastly, regimes that are neither autocratic nor democratic portend the greatest challenge to future stability across Sub-Saharan Africa. The rest of my talk is divided into five sections. I'll talk briefly about our research methodology. I'll share with you the purpose of the research and how it can be used. I will then introduce the five categories of structural risk that drive political instability in Sub-Saharan Africa. I'll explain how these risk factors are likely to change until 2040. And to conclude, I'll discuss the main trends which we identified in the research and I'll share some regional and country insights with you. So I'm going to talk about structural risk factors and political instability. So let me quickly define these terms. Structural risk factors reflect broad development contexts in which events may happen. They can either exacerbate or mitigate vulnerability to political instability. Structural risk factors tend to change slowly across time. They are not the immediate drivers of conflict and they cannot be used to predict exactly when, where and how conflict will happen. From now on, I'll just refer to risk factors. When I talk about political instability, I mean abrupt regime changes, such as, for example, coups, civil wars, genocides and systematic killings of political opponents. Of course, there are other forms of political instability that are also related to the structural risk factors that I'm going to discuss, such as um, violent riots or protests and other forms of instability or violent conflict. So let me talk briefly about the research and our methodology. This briefing is based on a joint research report by the ISS and the Party Center for International Futures at the University of Denver. The research is part of the Political Settlements Research Program led by the University of Edinburgh and funded by DFID. Our methodology relies on a multi-dimensional and dynamic understanding of risk. We use the International Futures Forecasting System to forecast structural risk over long time horizons. I need to summarize extensively for this talk, but of course a lot more detail and references will be available in the full report, which is due for publication in July. You'll be able to download this report from the ISS website and we'll be organizing a series of briefings and public launches. If you would like us to do a briefing for your organization, please just tell us. And <clears throat> so what is the purpose of this research and how can it be used? The research is core to the ISS focus on human security in Africa. Our findings provide evidence for where conflict prevention and peace building activities can give us the greatest benefits. They reveal entry points for policymakers how to drive systems to greater resilience across several key dimensions of development.
DFID, for example, is keen to use our report to inform its new approach to Africa. Now, let us look in a little more detail at the five structural risk factors for future instability in Sub-Saharan Africa. The risk for future instability are in five categories. The first is demographics or population dynamics. Secondly, we look at economic development. Our third dimension is the governance structure or regime in a country. Then we consider inequality and discrimination between groups. And our fifth category of risk is structural imbalances or uneven progress in development patterns. It's important to note that there are multiple paths to political instability and that the risk factors interact in complex ways. In other words, states can be vulnerable in multiple ways and there is no unified set of drivers of instability. For example, entirely different factors drive the current civil war in South Sudan, election-related violence in Kenya, the ongoing farmer herder conflict in Nigeria's Middle Belt or armed conflict in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. The drivers of instability are highly context-specific and they change over time, although they do not change uniformly, simultaneously or equally. We are focused on internal drivers. Of course, there are other drivers and um, more direct drivers of, of conflict. There is agents or actors, there is leadership, there is coalitions of people. Um, and there are also external drivers, um, say the, the much talked about neighborhood effect or indirect drivers such as climate change, um, transnational organized crime, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, we are focusing on the internal drivers, internal structural drivers of political instability. Let me explain each of the structural risk factors in a bit more detail. When we look at demographic risk, we are taking account of how large populations, rapid population growth, high infant mortality, high rates of net migration and large youth bulges make countries more vulnerable to political instability. When we look at the second category, economic development, we find that countries with low levels of GDP per capita, poor GDP per capita growth and low life expectancy are more at risk. Generally speaking, low levels of GDP per capita reflect low levels of investment in human development, lack of infrastructure, poor government capacity and governments that lack legitimacy. Our third category is regime type. And there are three broad categories of regimes, democratic states, autocratic states and states that are trapped somewhere in between states that combine elements of both democracy and autocracy, also called mixed regimes. These states are called anocracies. Most of Sub-Saharan Africa's states are anocracies. Anocracies are much more unstable than democracies or autocracies, and they are particularly vulnerable to experience regime changes. Our fourth category is inequalities. And we find that countries characterized by state-led discrimination across groups are at a higher risk of experiencing violent conflict. Our fifth category is structural imbalances. What we mean by this is countries with development profiles that are not typical compared to historical patterns or compared to what has happened in other world regions, in other countries. For example, countries with relatively high GDP per capita, but relatively low life expectancy, such as the case in most of Southern Africa, or countries that are fairly democratic, yet poor, such as Malawi. In fact, our analysis shows that low income democracies are more vulnerable to political instability than any level of autocratic regime. And lastly, we find that democracies with atypically large youth bulges, such as the case in South Africa, for example, are also more prone to instability. Now, I'd like to spend the last couple of minutes of my talk looking at specific trends, as well as some additional regional or country insights. Overall, 
Sub-Saharan Africa is likely to continue on its positive trajectory of declining risk for political instability, although structural risks have ebbed and flowed over time. A finding that supports the idea of the cyclical nature of conflict and violence. Nigeria currently faces the highest demographic risk for political instability in Sub-Saharan Africa, with an associated probability more than three times the Sub-Saharan African average. This situation is likely to persist. In fact, the countries that face the greatest demographic risk now and until 2040 include most of the countries that have seen the highest number of fatalities from organized political violence between 2001 and 2016. These are Sudan, Nigeria, the DRC, Somalia, South Sudan and the Central African Republic. Anocratic governance structures, governance structures that combine both elements of democracy and autocracy stand out as the most significant future risk factor for political instability in Sub-Saharan Africa. And as I said before, most states in Sub-Saharan Africa are anocracies. Where autocracies rely on repression and cooptation to, rest to restrain opposition forces, democracies settle societal grievances via political inclusion and the provision of public goods. In a sense, democracies are more inclusive by definition. Anocracies are less effective on both ends, which can lead to political instability. In future, Central Africa is projected to see significant increases in the average probability of political instability due to anocratic governance structures. The countries with the highest risk of experience the onset of political instability events due to their anocratic governance structure are Angola, Burundi, Cameroon, Chad, Congo, Ethiopia, Mauritania, Rwanda, Sudan, Togo and Uganda. Democracies will enjoy greater stability in the longer term, but only if economic development keeps pace and if countries in Sub-Saharan Africa start managing demographic risk more proactively and address inequalities. Thank you very much.